trip to Port Lear and the valleys of South Wales. First we join the M4 motorway and then head off towards England. Over the Seven Crossing, that's the second bridge, and then over the River Avon near Bristol, across the flat the wetlands of Somerset. These lands were flooded hundreds of years ago, and the hills that you can see in the distance were a, then island. Then it was drained by rivers of ditches cut like that. We leave the motorway and head across country to the lovely village of Porlock. I think we ought to go for a drive up the Porlock Hill just because it's there. Okay. Not now, but I think we should. I don't know whether you could call Porlock a large village or a small town, but it's very pretty. Believe it or not, this is an A road, and the first time I came along it, it was busy, really busy. It's the A39, which runs through Porlock. It was in the days when we had smaller cars, no uh, pickup trucks and SUVs. I well, we turned off the A road now, and we're heading towards um, West Porlock. Little hamlet, narrow roads again. And I think Tilly knows we're near our destination because she's stuck her head up. She's having a look out. We need it there, Tilly. Well, there's the hotel. Very nice, right on the harbour front. And next to it, is the ship in a really really old pub and it is dog friendly we'll take a little look around the hotel there's the reception the hallway with the stairs upstairs the library a sitting area in the hall guest lounge, all very tastefully done, that's the dining room. But now into the room that we were given, with the bay window overlooking a rather dry harbour, because the tide is right out. But that's the view we have from the room, and it's very nice indeed. And right over there in the distance, South Wales and in a sea. The tide here is uh, usually much higher than this. It's seven and a half metres tide this, uh, this time, but it can go up to eight, nine, and ten metres. So at the moment, all the boats are dry, dried out. Even the van. But the harbour master oversees everything and don't throw stones in the harbour. It's a bit difficult because the whole of the beach is actually pebbles. 
There we are, some holiday cottages. And a rather sad looking flag. The end of the season, well tattered. There's a lady's cloud shop there. And this whole area, this whole building is for sale. On a lease. There's that more glass, nice gift shop. But if you're into shopping, don't bother to come here because there's not a lot of shops. The next morning we had a beautiful sunrise. Magnificent. And the tide was coming in. So at least one of the boats was afloat. And smoke coming out of the chimney of the hotel. The fire was burning in the reception. I will say some of the boats were afloat, but this isn't a particularly high tide. There are many of them stayed dry. And the flag hung limp because there was no wind. And now we're off to climb Porlock Hill. One in four, or 25 percent. And I have a little story about this. In 1963, the beginning of 1963, I was in that little mini there, my souped-up mini, and I went up this hill, and my mother had warned me, it's very, very steep, she said, and you need to use first gear. And I said, Mum, you used to drive old clapped-out things from 1920. I have a 1960 car. I should be okay. Was I? No, I wasn't, because being a young man and a bit sure of myself, I stayed in second gear, and on a hairpin bend, I stalled it, and I never lived it down. It's one in four then. Yep. Is it this bend? No. Oh God! <laughs> it's the one coming up now. This one. Yeah. Right there. Oh. I've stolen it. <laughs> <laughs> I made it this time, Mum. I hope you were watching. I wouldn't want to come up here in Bendelin. No way. That is Porlock Hill. Well, well done, Valerie. Stopping recording now, yeah? Yeah. <laughs>